<laughs> Good morning, everyone. Happy Sabbath. Well, we have um, a few of our members missing. My husband, Philip, um, was not um, joining us this morning. My son wasn't able to come either. And unfortunately, I don't know if uh, you were aware that Irene Garcia was re rear-ended. Oh, so no. she had to, yes, but she's fine, which is a good thing. But she and Sergio are dealing with the repercussions of getting the car fixed and so forth. And she was in emergency care last night, but she's doing well. I just sent her a text and she's fine. So um, they would be here. And we had a, a great time with them. Um, let me just gather my thoughts. Thank you. What I ob obtained from this book was the opportunity to refocus. I have been attending church for over a decade now, and I find that, you know, my, my faith goes up and down, you know. Sometimes it feels really strong, sometimes I feel like I need a boost. And this was the answer that I was looking for. And we were focused on identifying a ministry that we could present to our church and become more involved. And I was really happy to have Natalie join us this time. Um, as much as I know Natalie with um, our praise band group, it gave me an additional insight to be able to spend time with her and with her children and their wonderful kids. I told her, Natalie, it's just wonderful. She's done an awesome job parenting them. Um, and in just getting to know one another, we become vulnerable. We open up and we share things that are personal and that bonds you. Hmm. And in reading about creating opportunities to invite friends to church and to get to know one another better, that's something that we kept on bringing up. It's like we know the, the people and we greet one another, but oftentimes it's just like, hi, bye, how are you? And it's not really... Um, personal at times. At least I'll just speak for myself. Sometimes it just seems superficial. And we thought, well, what ministry can we offer where we can create a deeper bond? And so we thought of the Jesus ministry. And the acronym is that we want to have a joyous effort to seek our understanding Savior. Mm. And in so doing, we're hoping to be able to research opportunities for us to create gatherings so we can fellowship. Um, thinking of a time where we were able to join Vaughn and Mark um, along with Kelly. And um, I'm trying to blank here because I'm looking at you. <laughs> Ricardo, of course. <laughs> and, it just, it is, it, and it was just so wonderful. We went hiking, and this was a few years back, and it still stands out in our mind. And we were thinking, why can't we create opportunities like that so that maybe after service there's uh, an event where we can invite friends and we can get to know each other better and come to one another, get to know each other at that deeper level where we can share our faith, share our struggles, and receive the support from one, one another and actually develop those deep friendships and keep our focus on the reason that we're here, which is our Lord Jesus. Amen. Thank Amen. you. And I know that Natalie had also something she wanted to share. I, I, um, I always get a little bit nervous before I start talking. But... Um, I just want to say that I really, really enjoy small groups. I really enjoy the time speaking to other adults about Christ and about um, not only about the books that we read, but about what's going on with each other's lives, like, like Pilar said, because a lot of times in today's busy schedule, you have this appointment, you have this going on, and you know in five minutes you have to get ready to go do something else. Mm. And it's very tough to make those bonds. We're so used to, you know, channel surfing where we're constantly switching, switching on and off, different things, and that's the way it seems like we're all living our lives. We're constantly switching from one thing to the next. Hmm. And I think it's time for us to put that aside, put the iPhone down, put, you know, the remote control this way, and make those bonds with our, um, our brothers and sisters in Christ. Um, this book, 
was a blessing for me because I was able to um, reinforce the bonds that Pilar and I already had. And I got to know her mother a little bit more and Philip and, and Irene and Sergio. And we shared some things that you wouldn't normally say in passing. There are things where you share part of your life with someone. Mm. And that's what, you know, believing in Christ is we are the body of Christ. We are his hands, we are his feet, we are an extension of him. And um, we have to realize we need to support each other. The, can, the hand cannot support itself. Just like a branch cut off of the vine can't live. Mm. So we need to do that. And I think through this group, I was able to see you know, certain things. Because you know, we've prayed. I've been in the church for a long time, just like Pilar. Um, as a matter of fact, she was the first person I met when I came to church. And um, I think that if I hadn't come and made those bonds at the beginning, I wouldn't be here today because I didn't get invited to church. I didn't even know what the Seventh-day Adventist Church was. But I was curious and I started reading my Bible. And because I read my Bible, I started looking for a church that shared what the Bible said to me, hmm. which was believing in the Sabbath. And many churches, when I came to them and asked them, well, isn't the Sabbath on Saturday? Well, yes, but, you know, it got changed after Jesus rose on Sunday. And I said, well, Jesus, when he rose, he didn't say, okay, the Sabbath now is going to be on Sunday. He rested on the Sabbath, and he rose on the first day. And, and when I would come to a church and tell them that, they didn't know what to say. And so when I came to this church, and I made fast friends, oh my gosh, you know, with, with Pastor Mitch, and he brought me to Pilar, and Pilar came and gave me Bible studies at home. Hmm. And every day I met someone else, someone new that I felt like I knew them, known them for years. Hmm. Um, next time I came to church, I met with Linda Fernandez. Hmm. Next time, you know, I started speaking to Annie. And through that, through all of these connections, I felt they were more like embraces hmm. to me. And I feel like that's, that's part of what our church needs. We need to have these connections instead of just a hello, bye, or blending into the, the background like wallpaper. We need to make these connections cons consistently mm. with everyone. Mm. And that's part of what we are saying. Because not only are we the body of Christ here in our church, we are an extension of him to other churches. And that is part of my testimony today, where I've had a constant prayer for my older sister, who's, who's lived out of state for many years, in, either in Washington, uh, New York. She's in Virginia now. She was in Japan, um, because she's part of a military family. And unfortunately, she, she does believe in God, but her beliefs are all over the place where she's afraid of witchcraft and ghosts and things like that. And I've had prayers for her and I've had um, uh, talks with her about what the Bible says about these things. And um, I've, I've, I've prayed for her in other Bible study groups that we've had. Mm. And I know other people have prayed for her too. And I just want to say and I want to praise God because my prayer changed. My prayer changed from, God, I need you to change her. My prayer changed to, Lord, if she doesn't listen to me, please put someone in her life that she will listen to to hear your word. Hmm. Amen. And two weeks ago, she called me, and she was praising God because she had um, some issues, some health issues, and she had to go to the emergency room um, because she was, uh, she was bleeding uh, Mm. You know, and they thought she had blood in her lungs. Mm. Um, and uh, she, she told me that she had gotten a job recently, uh, within the last month, actually. And uh, she made two fast friends. There were two women there that became fast friends with her. And they saw that there was something heavy on her heart. And one of the women said, can I pray with you? I felt like I need to pray with you today. And my sister thought that, you know, no one's ever asked her, can I pray with you? And so my sister said, okay. And the woman went and got another friend from their, their job, and they started to pray over my sister. And um, my sister said instantly she felt like 
all the burdens in the world were gone, that they'd been lifted up from her, that she felt that she had God's love around her, keeping her warm. She, she called me and she was so happy because she told me that these two women are Christian women. One of them is Pentecostal and one of them's Adventist. Mm. And they've also asked my sister to join them for Bible studies in the morning before work. And she is doing wow. that. Amen. And so this is my prayer. This is my prayer answered. And it's been answered through all of you that, that have known me from the prayers that I've had from my family. And um, I just want to say that you're my family too. Mm. So when I see that someone is in need, I try to help. I might not be able to do everything, mm. but I try to do what I can. And I want us all to feel that way. I want us all to feel like, you know, if your sister calls and they need help, you want to help them. If your sister or brother in Christ needs help, don't hesitate either. Mm. Just try to be with them, support them, you know, in any way possible. And um, I just want to, I want to thank everyone for their prayers and just for being here and being part of God's family. I want to thank you. Amen. 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 Thank you.